and hello again this is another quick demo of the new feature called clone fill as you can see here under the clone fill under the fill menu inside the image menu so clone fill how does it work well basically you start with an image and it may be almost perfect uh, let's in fact find one in our batch browser let me go to my favorite places and there's Hans there and I will be scrolling down to look for an image right. Central Park, yeah Alright, so Duck Pond, there. Let's have a look at this one for instance. Alright, so I'm going to select that and probably a fairly high definition picture, a couple of ducks, but also some people in the front. And what I'd like to do is essentially cut it down to only having this portion without the people in front. Now, I, I'd like to have these bottom ducks here as well. I like at least this one here that's fully visible. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna try, I'm not gonna crop it at the top of the people's heads. I, I need to find a way to remove these people from the picture, and so this is what we can do. First of all, we can go and say approximately this much is what we want to keep. Let's crop to that. Okay, maybe a little bit, give it a little bit more, so you have some margin. You can always later crop some more, so something like that, right? So let's go and image crop to selection. Right. and um, we can go and store that so we have a snapshot of that store this image then we can quickly get back to that if we need to and so here we go and we can see the whole image so essentially let me right click here to move this around a little bit what we want to do is is get rid of this couple that's sitting in front here and this one here that's standing and the way to do that is to simply select that region with the lasso tool so let's go and select something like this. In fact, this dock needs to go too because we can't have part of it there. So we'll select all that, all right? And then we'll go and uh, blur the edge, blur the transition here a little bit. Um, and so we'll go to the selection menu and do a Gaussian blur or a box filter alpha. In the box filter case, you can also see the alpha selection. You can see how blurry it is or how crisp it is. Let's give it something like this. Right. And so now we have a blurred selection there and we're ready to use the clone fill. Let's go to the fill uh, image menu and fill and select clone fill. Now if you if you hover over this, you'll see the actual original image without transform. But if you move around outside of it, it will shift to the neighboring image area. And you can find an area which has a fairly decent match with regard to color and brightness and so on and click and you're done Control d to clear the selection and that part is gone now same thing with this one here right so we'll go and uh select again we are on the selection tool the lasso tool that is and we'll go something like this all right and once again let's go and select <coughs> and um, blur this with the box alpha Something like that, perhaps a little bit more. And move to image and fill and clone fill. And once again, you can go and find, and maybe you'll find one with a duck. Right? So this duck that's up here, you can have it if you don't mind seeing the same duck there as well. The way, if you're looking for a particular area that you like to center in that area, you just go point it. Right? You move your cursor to that area, to this duck, and that one is the one that's going to appear over there. So it's a quick and easy way to, quick and natural way to say what it is you'd really rather see in that place of that selection. Click and Control D to clear the selection. And so now we could do a little bit more uh, cropping because we gave ourselves some margin at the bottom. But if, if that's not the case, if, for instance, these edge areas here where the selection was blurred and we still see a little bit of a transition to the old image, one thing that we could do is see if we can grab this area that is going all the way to the edge and move that over. Again, so there's two ways to do that. One, of course, this being a paint program, you could go with the custom pickup tool here, the brush pickup tool, and simply pick that up as a custom brush. For instance, something like this region here. Right, and then go at full opacity or close enough and stamp it down here, stamp it down here. Uh, of course, that's going to be a little bit messy. At times, you'll see a sudden transition uh, on the corners and you might need to blur that. And that's why perhaps the fill, the clone fill might be a little bit more uh, appropriate. You do, just do a selection of that, right? 
and then you go to blur it a little bit don't have to blur it a whole lot in this case let's go box blur alpha just a tiny little bit like so and then in this case now we'll go to image fill and clone fill and so whichever area you point at that's the area that's going to be filled over there so for instance if you wanted some rocks there too you could possibly manage to get these rocks right in there uh, like this one here transitions into water there you go control d and there you are all right so that uh, hopefully gives you a nice little way to use that uh, clone fill if you look at this one let's store this image and do a side-by-side -side comparison uh, store this image and so that's the one we've now gotten and this is the one we had initially with the people in front a little bit bigger that image was a little bit larger uh, we cropped some off at the bottom after doing this fill Alright, well thanks for watching. This is uh, of course another new feature in PD Pro Howler version 8. Should also be in PD Pro Artist version 8 once that's released. And Howler of course is not quite out yet. Uh, I'm using a beta or release candidate 7 here as of uh, somewhere around June 9 or 8.